Hello and welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. This video will be part two of a two-part series in the community fish we chose for our mixed reef aquarium. If you haven't already watched part one, please do check it out. In the first video, we discussed the fish that make up the bottom half of the Craft Aquatic 120 gallon mixed reef. Here we'll continue on with the fish that tend to swim towards the mid to upper portion of our display. As in the first video, we'll go into a bit of detail about each fish, discussing particular care requirements, the region they are from, and how each one adds to the overall look and function of this mixed reef community. This is our canary wrasse, also known as the golden wrasse or the yellow chorus wrasse. You'll find them from the Pacific to the eastern Indian Ocean. They tend to be very social swimming in and out of the reef structure over coral branches, and they'll also spend a good amount of time in the open sections of the aquarium, adding a perfect splash of yellow to that often empty space. If you look carefully at the head of the canary wrasse, you'll see these subtle intricate green and orange stripes and patterns which are really nice visual detail. You'll want to exercise caution when introducing a full-size canary wrasse to your system. The larger they get, the more they tend to nip at smaller shrimp, snails, crabs, and feather dusters. Fortunately, they have the advantage of seeking out acro-eating flatworms, one of their favorite snacks. The canary wrasse requires a diet rich in meaty food and is considered a peaceful community fish. Here we have our Blue Devil Damsel. Being a mid to upper tier fish, color is extremely important for drawing the eye in and around the aquarium, and the Blue Devil Damsel does not disappoint. It's colored such a saturated blue and yellow, it's difficult to capture on camera. If you've ever seen one on display next to a tank full of typical blue damselfish, you'll notice the difference immediately. In the past, we've had minor acro-eating flatworm infestations, and this little fish would gobble them up as quickly as we could blast them off. In my experience, this damsel may bug a newly introduced fish for a bit, but will ultimately leave it alone. In the end, the blue devil damsel is easy to care for, interesting to watch, and a worthy addition to most mixed reef communities. This is a pajama cardinal fish. You'll find them all over the western Pacific, from Java to Fiji. With their red eyes, wide waistband, and checker pattern body, there's a lot to appreciate when it comes to this mishmash of interesting shapes and colors. The pajama cardinal is one of the most peaceful aquarium fish available, and will hover in the branches of coral, or out in the open depending on how active other fish are being. Cardinal fish are said to coexist peacefully in a group, quickly establishing a strict hierarchy, but we still recommend one fish per 50 gallons. These and the chromis are the only fish where we have two of the exact same variety, but in a four foot tank, we feel there's plenty of room for them to establish separate territories. Getting into one of the larger fish in this tank, here we have our Scopus tang. You'll find them in the Indo-Pacific region. The Scopus tang uses its pharyngeal teeth to feed on filamentous algae throughout the aquarium. It will ignore most hair algae in Bryopsis, but we'll have a solution for that coming up in our next video. Scopus tangs have been known to reach a foot in length, but will most likely stay smaller in the aquarium environment. They prefer to be kept one per 100 gallons, though some reefers have luck introducing multiple tangs together in the very beginning of their aquarium setup. Though Scopus tangs will readily eat mice and shrimp and all kinds of frozen foods, you should strive to include regular feedings of algae-based pellets and nori on a weekly basis. This is our Liretail Antheus. You'll find them in the Western Indian Ocean, Red Sea, and Pacific Ocean. Our Antheus is a male, so it is a combination of various hues of red, pink, and peach. Females of the species tend to be more orange in color. Male Liretail Antheus can reach nearly six inches in length, while female Antheus top out at three. In an effort to keep aggression low in a relatively small container of water, we chose to keep a single Antheus rather than a group of four with three females. Generally, Antheus should be housed in an aquarium of 90 gallons or larger. They are carnivores and will eventually learn to eat frozen and dry food, especially if other fish in the aquarium are accepting these offerings. They'll typically stay towards the upper portion of the aquarium, leaving the lower half free for the inhabitants outlined in part one of this series. 
The biggest fish in our tank is our Nassau tang, also called the orange spine unicorn fish. You'll find many varieties of this fish in the Indian Ocean, Red Sea, and Pacific Ocean. Some of these tangs can reach a foot and a half long, so be sure your tank is big enough before purchasing a juvenile. The Nassau tang will stay very active throughout the day and is a surprisingly precise swimmer for being such a big fish. If you have a tank under 8 feet long, make sure your main rock structure is placed in a way that the fish can swim all the way around it in an unbroken pattern. This will effectively double the usable swimming area Area in your four to six foot aquarium. Our Nassau tang seems to know exactly when food will drop into the feeding ring throughout the day and does a good job of spreading it around for the other fish while he's taking his fair share. Nassau tanks make excellent community fish for the upper portion of your reef aquarium. Last but not least, we have the blue-green chromis. You'll find them in vast numbers through the Indo and South Pacific and coral reefs and lagoons. Blue-green chromis are beautiful, hardy, and are some of the most peaceful damselfish available, which is why they are often one of the first fish added to a newly cycled system. They are interesting to watch in groups of five to seven, but due to aggression, will most likely dwindle down to one or two fish occupying their individual territories in the tank. We recommend one blue-green chromis for every 50 gallons of tank volume. Blue-green chromis have an extremely high metabolism and in the wild feed on plankton throughout the day so they need to be fed often ideally with an auto feeder if you see your chromis getting thinner it is a good indicator that you need to increase nutrient throughput in your system blue green chromis are excellent fish for your mixed reef community they tend to hang out high in the water column or in the branches of your staghorn coral As we hope you can see, every one of these top dwelling fish has their own specific role, preferred way of moving through the upper half of the aquarium, and relationship with each other. They tend not to step on each other's fins, and complement one another in the way that the larger the fish is in our system, the less aggressive it tends to be. We were able to mitigate bad chemistry between various species by only adding one of each specific type of fish, and introducing them in a way where less aggressive fish were added first, followed by progressively more territorial species. Though some of the upper tier fish in our tank serve a specific role, many of them have been added for the splash of color, interest factor they add to the display, and their ability to generate a significant amount of nutrients, keeping nitrates and phosphates at optimal levels in a system full of filter feeding coral, microfauna, and invertebrates. We hope this and our previous video give you a bit to think about when it comes to adding fish to your mixed reef system. If you haven't already, we hope that you are able to build a robust, colorful, and interactive community of fish that get along and complement each other in a variety of levels. We'd love to hear your ideas about when and how to add fish to a mixed reef system and what you feel are the most important factors leading to a functional and peaceful community of fish. We have a whole bunch of videos coming, so please do subscribe to Craft Aquatic if you'd like to see more like this one. As always, thank you for watching.